Hey everyone, and welcome back to my completionist playthrough of the Baldur's Gate saga with SCS. Yes. In this episode, we're finally going to start out that Mavar's quest line in the docks. Uh, some episodes past, you might remember Renal Bloodscalp gave us this mission uh, to look into the affairs of one of his smaller subordinate guilds, led by Mavar. I can actually teleport over there. And because he had suspicions that Mavar was uh, plotting against the Shadow Thieves, perhaps a scheme to like overthrow the leaders of the Shadow Thieves, and uh, we're going to check it out. Also this front here, Gorge, is a merchant, and um, it was because of him that we delayed coming here at an earlier time of day. Now we have 7 p.m., so everything should work out uh, fine time-wise. That's because I want to steal from him, uh, but if we progress this quest line up to a certain point, his uh, shop is not going to be available anymore. And I want to uh, steal some of his goodies and also engage in some other nighttime activities with pickpocketing involved, all in one go. So that's why we uh, delayed coming here for a while. And if we check out his uh, stuff, he actually has a few cool things. Most uniquely, uh, this uh, nymph cloak that we know from Baldur's Gate 1. And uh, with it, we're going to be able to have maximum discounts coming from Charisma when purchasing uh, goods. He also has eight potions of Master Thievery. And also this rogue stone that I'm going to steal, because uh, there's a certain place that we're going to visit later on in the game um, where it actually requires a rogue stone to gain entrance there. And uh, for that purpose we can use a stolen rogue stone, and all the rogue stones that we find through adventuring we can just um, sell for money, which is easier than, uh, you know, looking for a fence to uh, sell this rogue stone, which of course you also can do. Um, anyway, I'm not going to go too hardcore on stealing from him when the time comes, but I think I'm going to also take this mace plus two, so that Anomen can have a plus two weapon, which matters sometimes. And uh, as a matter of fact, actually in an upcoming fight it's going to matter, and uh, Anomen is not going to be able to do too much in it, because he only has a plus one mace. Welcome. Anyway, if we present Gorch with a note from Renault that apparently we're being transferred to this guild, he's going to let us in. And we're going to be able to check out the guild. But before we explore further here, uh, I'm going to go straight downstairs and uh, talk to Mavar, who is going to uh, send us upstairs anyway. And then along the way we can explore the upper floors. And now we're just going to introduce ourselves and see what's up. Hello there. I certainly hope you've got a reason to be bothering me, because I'm quite busy. As you can see. Ah, poor Lin passed out. I have a few minutes to spare then. Who are you, and why shouldn't I kill you? So Lin is this poor fellow on the table here, being tortured. And we can say that we're with Renal. Perhaps I should toss you on the rack and see if you are being true. Or perhaps not. Scared you, did I? Fear will keep you honest. You don't want to end up like Lin here, with me having to test your honesty. Difficult to do with certainty. And who would examine you if your honesty were in doubt? Do you get the same? Apparently he's managed to earn a few favors uh, during his time in the Shadow Thieves, so it wouldn't be too easy. But uh, anyway, here comes the first mission. How about a little petty larceny amidst the stuff robes over at the Temple of Talos? I require the amulet worn by the Weather Mistress. Yes, it looked lovely on her, and I have a beautiful Sheltie Spaniel cross that it will adorn just as well. <laughs> I like Mayfair, I like his style. So apparently he wants this sacred uh, amulet. Uh, of the worshippers of Talos, worn by their chief, like, head priestess, <laughs> to, just to give to his dog as a little ornament. <laughs> and of course he suggests going there at night, because she likes, likely uh, takes it off before going to sleep. But anyway, the cool thing about this mission is that uh, if you have nine or less reputation, it's slightly different. He's going to want um, the statuette of Lathander in the Lathander Temple. And uh, if you remember from a previous episode, there was a locked safe in that uh, temple, and that is where the statuette is. And if you go there at night, the two guards on the way to that platform with the safe uh, are going to be gone. And although, although Dawnmaster Creel likes to hang around in that portion of the temple, he actually wanders around. Uh, so if you just wait a little, uh, he's going to go somewhere else, and then you can open the safe and get the statuette. And uh, Mavar is actually going to s to say that he wants it as a centerpiece for the guild table. <laughs> so of course he has no uh, respect for these like sacred, uh, <laughs> sacred objects. Of course we already have the necklace of Talos that we've stolen uh, earlier, so we can already give it to him. What is it? 
Well, we're back at last. Yeah, it, it took us so long. <laughs> I'll cancel the, old, uh, cancel the order to kill you then. You have a few skills we might find useful after all. Now let's have a look at that amulet. <laughs> it's a mystery how they walk with a dinner plate around their necks. I'll file it with the other garbage sent to Kalimshan. They like jewelry big, I hear. Now let's put you to some real work. I haven't the time to piddle around with you, so my right-hand man will keep you busy until you can work for me personally. His name is Edwin. Bloody good spellcaster, but he likes his luxuries. Usually happens to adventurers that hate the road. So yeah, he's on the third floor, and uh, that's where, where we're headed now. And yeah, Edwin, <laughs> if you remember from Baldur's Gate 1, we're going to meet him soon. Yes, but now along the way we can explore a little bit more of the guild, take some goodies, t and talk with some guys. Here's Corvin. Which, uh, who apparently likes his alcohol a little bit too much. And, uh, yeah, apparently our transfer here was pretty quick. Lynn not even being called or nothing. Good to meet you. We can, of course, ask about Mavar if we get lost exploring the guild, I guess. And, yeah, he doesn't even remember if uh, he met us earlier or not. So I guess this uh, alcohol consumption left him with some brain damage, I guess, and some memory loss. Anyway, here's uh, Zintris. Is going to display a little bit of an attitude, being the uh, senior cutpurse. But if we ask whether he's threatening us, he's going to back down a little bit. What is it? And now on this uh, next floor, and there is plenty of different uh, locks to open and traps to disarm. But I'm going to do it a little later once we have uh, changed some of our party members. And uh, once we progress this quest a little bit further because we are going to get rid of Minsk soon and we are going to recruit Edwin. Yeah, he's going to be our Speaking final uh, core party member, the final part of the the five and uh, that are going to be our core throughout the Shadows of Amn. Anyway, here's yes. Anishai. Yes. An assassin extraordinaire, apparently. There truly aren't enough fellow sisters in the Shadow Thieves. Yep. Yes. And anyway, here comes uh, one of my favorite lines in the whole game, where Edwin actually introduces himself. <laughs> I just uh, love it. Are we going to uh, first take some stuff? Greetings. I am Edwin Odesseron. You Simians may refer to me merely as Sir, if you prefer a less syllable-intensive workout. <laughs> what is it? I love that. It's uh, going to come up soon. At first, let's just take these goodies. There's a spear in this container, and there's some minor stuff in the main room. And this is also pretty cool. This is not a real door, if we try to open it. Apparently a clever bit of painting and molding on the wall. Okay, I have to do some inventory management. I think there's... Oh yeah, the gold is here, and then the chest. Greetings, I am Edwin Odesseron. You simians may refer to me merely as Sir, if you prefer a less syllable-intensive workout. <laughs> I love that. And because Edwin was the enemy of uh, Dinaher in Baldur's Gate 1, they are going to have a little back and forth with Minsk. And uh, Minsk, of course, all <laughs> ready to go. And uh, fight, go for the ice, boo! But Edwin is going to calm him down and uh, talk some reason, talk some sense into him. Anyway, of course, depending on what happened to Edwin in your playthrough, we have a couple of different conversation options. Um, and yeah, Jahira is going to chime in, but why would she think that she, he had anything to do, or the Shadow Thieves, that they had anything to do uh, with our capture? Uh, the Shadow Thieves was were fighting Irenicus, not working together with him. But of course, yeah, uh, the death of Khalid and our capture, he had, of course, nothing to do with it. My association with the Shadow Thieves has been accomplished for reasons of my own, none of which has anything to do with you. And now comes his quest. Hear me. It seems my prowess as a mage has captured the eye of the cowled wizards. I'm certain they are envious, though their actions are not fitting tribute. So apparently there's a cowled wizard agent spying on Edwin's activities, I guess. And we will need to get rid of him. His name is Raik Gethras. And um, we can oppose Edwin here. And actually throughout um, a couple of tasks that Edwin is going to give us, uh, if we are too adamant, I guess, in uh, not doing those and uh, opposing 
Edwin's missions, I guess, and saying we're not going to do that, there's actually a uh, an outcome where Edwin goes hostile and teleports out, and a couple of Shadow Thieves uh, appear here uh, wanting to backstab us and whatnot. And that kind of breaks the whole quest line because if we go down to Mavar, he's going to just tell us to go talk to Edwin for some, you know, more jobs, more work. But Edwin is not going to be here. And, uh, yeah, that basically just ends the quest line right there. Anyway, um, he knows a little bit about our lineage, I guess. But yeah, we will have to agree to this mission and go and get rid of... Uh, I do wish to apologize for so abruptly ending our conversation yesterday. I meant no offense by it. Of course, this is the continuation of Anoman's talks, and we will soon cut the romance where these talks are going to actually become a little romantic. But uh, this I wanted to also show you, uh, because this is pretty cool. Uh, differently from the romances with the females, um, where basically almost all they do is just talk about themselves and just dump all of their baggage onto you. <laughs> Anoman is actually going to... Um, oh, actually, let's progress his, this talk. Yeah, so of course he, he thinks of his sister and the guilt of his that uh, he left her alone with their father. But uh, yeah, she stays to take care of him even at his drunken worst. And of course, as always, you know, all the, these conversations, feel free to pause and, and read everything for yourself in more detail. But yeah, the cool thing about him is that earlier on he asked about Gorion, and now he asks about Imoen, who is uh, kind of like our sister. Yeah, we grew up together and we are very close. It is a terrible thing, then, that she has been taken away. Let us continue our quest, then, and strive to seek her freedom. So this is a, a nice conversation where Anaman seems to be pretty likable. <laughs> but soon you, we will witness some of his <laughs> interjections. Anyway, here I'm just going to, while I uh, remember about it, I'm just going to open up these two locks for some experience. And we're not going to steal anything from here. Um, if we, uh, you know, take something, she's going to call the guards and of course we can leave before they spawn, but I don't want to do that. And there are only some minor, minor goodies in there. So anyway, here is uh, Rayek Gethrus's home, and the door is open now. And uh, actually, we are going to do a little thing here with the Potion of Ice Dust. I'm going to give that to Minsk. Just as a reminder, this Potion of Ice Dust um, is kind of like an AoE protection against fire, but it only lasts for one round. But that's going to be enough for our purposes here, because if we go inside, <clears throat> and there are these four fire methods, or fire methods and two magma methods, having some fire spells, kind of like again as our scorcher beams, that type of thing, and two ice methods. So basically, uh, Minsk is going to use this potion of ice dust. Being in the middle of our party, it's going to, you know, uh, spread its AoE effect on all of our party members, and we are going to be immune to fire uh, for a little while. Um, let's actually switch Karenai to some ranged damage. Is it now? Actually, a gentleman can approach in melee. Yeah, so that's the effect. And now we can just deal with these uh, methods. It's not a big deal even if they do damage you, but it's just a nice way to avoid some unnecessary damage from them. From all of these beams and whatnot. Alright, now it expired, so Jahir actually received 4 damage from fire, but, uh, you know, as you can see all the way before we were just immune to all of that fire. So just a nice place, in my opinion, to use that uh, one of those ice dust potions. There's also going to be some traps in here. This will not take long. And uh, upstairs there are going to be two golems, two stone golems. And you don't need any, uh, they don't have any specific resistances, aside from 100% resistance to magic. Um, but they do require plus two weapons. And that's why I think we're going to buff up Senashira with some mirror images. And we're going to go upstairs with uh, her, Minsk, and Corrigan, I guess. And these uh, stone golems, of course, have the, the golem slow kind of ability, and they hit like a truck. So let's just keep Minsk and uh, Corrigan a little bit in the back. And unfortunately, all of them got slowed. No one uh, made their saving throw. 
But it should be fine. One of them is already down. Oh yeah, that's... Uh, his actually... his hit went throughout all of these mirror images. <laughs> and he actually dealt uh, some cool damage to Sinashira. Right, and that's it. And now we can bring up the rest of our party. I could have had Kirinai, but she is so vulnerable, uh, her armor class being so low. Or is so bad, I should say. Um, and I didn't want her to suffer some unnecessary damage. So here from behind the pillow, there's, there's some gold. And uh, upstairs there's going, there's going to be Rayek, Gethras, and uh, I'm going to just wait out that slow before we approach. Also, one thing that we can do is identify this Wand of the Heavens, so that we have another source of a uh, high-level spell, because Rayek is surely going to have some minor globe type protection. And um, also, I think he's pretty likely uh, to cast something that uh, is going to make it uh, impossible for us to hit him for a while. And we're going to see if uh, that is true. Yes. Alright, the slow is gone. Also, if you say, uh, pardon me then, I'll be on my way, he's actually not going to become hostile right away. And you can like position your guys as you want and all that. But I am going to say it straight. I'm here to end your life, cowled wizard. And yeah, we're going to give him a little bit of a chance to uh, get his protections first. And we're going to already spread out a lot in this room. So let's see. He has Stone Skin and Minor Globe, but he doesn't have improved invisibility. He also has Fire Shield, and that's going to provide him with 50% fire resistance, but uh, that's still not 100%. We're still going to be able to do some damage with our Flame Strike uh, to interrupt his spells. And, uh, and this Fire Shield also is going to uh, deal some fire damage to melee attackers, so I think we're going to switch to some ranged attacks, but yeah, I think. Yeah, he has Mantle, and that whole line of spells, uh, Mantle, Improved Mantle, and Absolute Immunity, uh, those spells were buffed by SCS um, to be more useful, because they are pretty high-level spells, and as they were in uh, the unmodded game, they could just get kind of uh, outgeared, I guess, by our party. And basically what I mean here is that uh, Mantle, for example, protects the caster uh, from weapons of... Uh, well, non-magical, and also of enchantment of plus one and plus two. So if we had a plus three weapon, this spell wouldn't protect him against it. But SCS basically buffs all those spells by adding another enchantment level uh, to all of them. So Mantle also now protects from a plus three weapon. So Lilarcore, for example, uh, won't work uh, on uh, on Rayek. You know, we're, he's uh, basically invulnerable right now. So uh, we just have to wait it out, basically, because those spells are uh, very short in duration. They only last for four rounds. So basically, we have to make sure that for four rounds, we just interrupt his spell in different ways. And then once this protection runs out, we're going to be able to just go in with physical damage and finish him off. So that's why I prepared the Cone of Cold and I prepared that um, Flame Strike so that we can just uh, interrupt his spells. He has some minute meteors that he's going to throw. I thought he was about to cast. He already ran out, I guess, of his minute meteors, and he's not casting for some reason. Alright, now he's casting, so let's offer him some Cone of Cold. And he actually did manage to get his spell off, we were a little too slow with that. But that was just to remove magic on Jahira, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, now let's offer him some Flame Strike, I guess. Boom. Yeah, that, that was effective in interrupting him. I'm just listening for a sound cue for when this Mantle spell dissipates. But uh, I'm not sure if, if I missed it now or not. Let's just try and attack him with some, some ranged attacks. And we'll see if it's gone or not. Oh yeah, it is uh, It is gone already, so we're just going to finish him off like that, and also with Senashira I'm going to go in, and although of course she's going to receive fire damage back from that fire shield, I am willing to trade some HP for the fact that she of course is going to uh, 
hit him with these this electricity electricity damage to interrupt his spell, but apparently it wasn't interrupted. But it didn't, doesn't matter because we cut through his stone skin just in time anyway and just managed to uh, kill him for good. All right, now we can detect some traps and loot him. Some minor stuff. Yeah, AC7 bracers, quarter staff plus two, nothing special. Okay, we can disarm that and get ourselves another wand of fire and a mislead scroll. So mislead is going to go to uh, Kiranai and we cannot identify that wand of fire yet. All right, now that we are after this fight, we are now going to dismiss Minsk. Uh, that's why. That's because it's still going to be a little while since we are able to recruit Edwin, and uh, that's basically our plan to recruit Edwin in the place of Minsk. Uh, but it's uh, going to uh, like before we are able to recruit Edwin. The only thing we have to do is a couple of quests that don't actually require any fights. And uh, Minsk would, uh, over the course of that, we're going to, of course, get some general experience rewards, and Minsk would just be leeching off of that experience for, like, no reason. That, that experience would just go to waste, because we are planning of, uh, on getting rid of him anyway. So, that's it for Minsk. Let's just have one more conversation with Ludarkor for the road. So, are we gonna kill something Maybe now? he's going to offer us this uh, dragon What's line. Since when do you care about me unless I'm impaled in something's guts? Oh, well, fine. Let me think for a minute. I think you need to take better care of me. I got more chips than a blind beaver. I look like a second-rate pig poker. <laughs> that wasn't it still. Oh, of course, I'm going to quick save to avoid that one glitch that I explained before. So, All right, one, one more try. I think you need to take All right, he's stuck on that. Anyway. Let's just take a quick look at Minsk's accomplishments. He managed to kill 64 targets, which accounted for 19% of uh, total kills in, a, in our party. And uh, the most powerful vanquished foe was the Bone Golem from uh, Regic's cellar. So yeah, I like Minsk, but unfortunately, you know, this is not the playthrough to keep him until the end. Now is the time to say goodbye and thank him for his services. And um, I think this mace is. Carry no more. What was given is now upon the ground. Oh yeah, he has a normal mace, so we can leave that with Minsk, and leave him his normal weapons. And the uh, rest of it is going to go to Corgan for now, I guess. This belt can go into Kirinai. And uh, yeah, that's it. Double check if he doesn't have anything useful. You can say goodbye to Boo, and that's it. So thank you, Minsk, for your services. Now you can go and rest at the Copper Coronet. Who needs to know? Did you want us to remain with the group? Yeah, so, of course, he's going to rest there. It will be done. And uh, we are soon going to be able to recruit Edwin. I am listening. And, uh, yeah, now it's time to just continue with the quest line, now that Rayek was taken care of. We'll can actually done. go straight to the third floor here. Certainly. My lackeys return and none too soon. Has the cowled fool been disposed of? Yep. Alright, so this is already, you know, 20,000 experience, just a general experience reward, and already, you know, Minsk is, uh, uh this a portion of it doesn't go to waste. Uh, with Minsk gone. Alright, so here we are supposed to retrieve some documents, and if we ask about what these documents are about, apparently that is not our concern, but if we uh, continue to be uncooperative, I guess, uh, he's going to, I guess, slip up, I guess, and, and tell us a little bit about them. Don't throw your life away over minor political documents from the Night Knives. Mavar is entitled to them. The Knives are apparently his secretive allies. So this is kind of already a confirmation of what uh, Reynolds suspected. Uh, Mavar apparently is gathering some kind of uh, secret allies for some uh, for some kind of a scheme, I guess. All right, now we're at your service then. <laughs> okay, thanks for for telling us. So yeah, there's a guy called Marcus at the Sea's Bounty, and uh, he suggests using Guile to get these documents from him. And there's actually um, quite a few different ways to obtain these documents. I'm going to leave Jahira outside. And yeah, here's Marcus. 
and uh, I'm going to showcase a couple of things. And well, first of all, we can just pickpocket the documents from him and just be done with that. Uh, but now I'm going to show you a couple of like different outcomes depending on charisma. So first I'm going to talk to him with a low charisma character like Corgan. And here we have this line where we try to intimidate him, which is going to fail with low charisma, and uh, also an offer to purchase the documents, which is also going to fail if it's a low charisma character. Now let's talk to him with a moderate, moderate charisma character like Anaman. So now he is going to be willing to sell us these documents, but we only have this one option to offer 250 gold for these documents and, and buy them for that price. But now, if we talk to him with a uh, good charisma character, like Sinashira, uh, now we also have the option to haggle down the price to 200 gold. And also, since we're a female, we would be able to use our like female charms on him, which would work, by the way. But Sinashira is not that type of lady, <laughs> so we're not going to do that. We're just going to intimidate him, and that's going to work. And also... A cool thing is that if you play an evil protagonist, you also, through these dialogue options, have a way to like quickly and quietly snap his neck, and uh, that would kill him, and then you can t take the documents, but kill him without any reputation loss, because it's kind of like a stealth kill, I guess, through the conversation option. Whereas if you just attack him um, normally, you are going to uh, have a, a reputation penalty for that, if you just, you know, murder him in plain sight. So anyway, if we just threaten him, he's going to fold and uh, give us the documents. So there they are. No additional description, really, about them. Oh yeah, let's go back to Edwin then. This will not take long. Do you have the documents I asked for? This matter is more important than your average simple correspondence. Marvelous work, marvelous work. You've obviously exceeded your lowborn heritage and surged to the vanguard of Goonery. Uh, what? <laughs> Never mind. And now apparently Mavar has a final task for us. Something that will prove our loyalty. And we can actually go through this entrance. There is a second entrance to that bottom floor where Mavar is. It'll bring us straight to him. Edwin has been telling me you are at the very least competent fairly good at the sneaksman's trade, but a little ham-fisted when you fight. Exactly what I'm looking for. I have a special task for you. You do this for me, and you'll be set within the guild for whatever you need. Don't think it will be easy, though. Actually, it's going to be extremely easy. There is a... Shh! There is a traitor among us. Yes, one of who has abused the trust we have given him. He must be dealt with in a permanent fashion. So Enbarl is his name, and he's also at the Seas Bounty, so that's where we're going to have to go again. We can ask a little bit about what his crimes are. They are heinous, vicious, and also not of your business. <laughs> and um, there's no other way to deal with him. Apparently treachery must command the harshest penalty. All right, so we have to agree. That's the spirit I like to see. All right, yes. so off to the Seas Bounty we go again. And um, also when it comes to his name, Embarl, it's a very similar name to just Barl, which is going to be a cleric we're going to meet in Trade Meet later on, if we do uh, Mazzy's quests. And also, if you remember from uh, Baldur's Gate 1, there was Marl in Baragost in Feldepost Inn, who approached us in a pretty aggressive manner because he lost his son, inspired by other adventurers to, like, uh, go on adventures and unfortunately perished during uh, the course of those. So anyway. I must flee! I must flee! Apparently this is all about some kind of a misunderstanding, so if we inquire more... I didn't mean to. I overheard Mavar talking to some of the other guild members about killing Renal Bloodscalp. I cried out in shock, and Mavar heard me. I'm as good as dead. I know it. Yeah, I've been faithful to the Shadow Thieves. So we can suggest going to Renal with this. But uh, he will say that Mavar will hunt him down, and Renel may think he is the assassin, so he wants to flee the city. And um, since uh, of also, and Mavar in his conversation, if you paused and, and read it for yourself, I, I didn't actually draw attention to it, but in his uh, description of this mission, he actually said that he wants Embarl's dagger. And that's a vital piece of information, because we can just ask Embarl to um, give us his dagger, 
and that's going to be proof enough apparently and we can just let him go and <laughs> now comes a pretty good interjection by Animan <laughs> and this is again not how a knight is supposed to behave dude and uh, Jahira is actually going to draw attention to that and now here here comes a <laughs> you'll see that <laughs> his response shut your worthless mouth wench <laughs> Oh, Animan, I stand with the righteous and have proved myself time and again. Do not compare me to that that dog. <laughs> and it's like, and Jahira has no retort to that. <laughs> like, no one talks like that to Jahira, who is normally the one displaying some, some attitude, but apparently she has just, you know, nothing to say to him. <laughs> Shut your worthless mouth, wench. Dang, aren't you glad now that we have Animan in our party? <laughs> anyway. Now that we have uh, Enbarl's dagger, we can bring it to Mavar, and he's going to be convinced yes, that Enbarl is dealt with. The traitor is dead, I trust. Yes, you have his dagger. Despite your useless appearance, you have done well. Yes, you have his dagger. <laughs> Now go. I have matters to attend to that are above you. So, yeah, <laughs> like Mavar, he's a bit of a psycho, but. I like his style here. Uh, no matter what we say here, he's not going to be listening to us anymore. He's just, uh, his thoughts are already elsewhere. Yes, yes, yes. Truth be known, I'm not listening to you. Now, Ambar was a thorn to be removed, and now I can move on to other things. Now the way is clear to me. You have been a useful tool, and you may be one again. Don't think you are more than that. I will have a thousand thieves, all doing my bidding just as you are. Go now, tool, and leave the thinkers to their thinking. Talk to Edwin, he might have something for you to do. So yeah, we are nearing the end of this quest line, and before we talk to Edwin, actually, yeah, we're going to recruit him and then do some stuff, but uh, all of that is going to happen in the next episode. We're going to finally be able to recruit Edwin to our cause, present him, you know, talk about some things and finish this whole quest line and proceed with some some other things to do. So as always, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you next time.